I just don't know where she is. I'd love to just know where she is or what happened. Or... Tom, however, to the dismay of many, he could be ruled out fairly quickly. Jill's phone had pinged at Hope Road, near the couple's apartment on Lux Street, before moving north along the Tullamarine Freeway at around 4.30 a.m., before the signal cut out near Gisborne, a small town 33 and a half miles northwest of Melbourne. That just happened to be right when Tom had been out searching for Jill around Sydney Road and had been caught clearly on CCTV. He simply couldn't have had anything to do with Jill's disappearance. By Monday morning, Jill had been missing for more than 48 hours, and apart from the general direction of where her mobile phone had gone, investigators had very little to go on. That is, until they got a, an un, 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 unexpected 911 call from the public. There's been a new development in the search for missing Melbourne woman Jill Ma. Someone cutting through an alleyway to Hope Road had found a woman's handbag, a handbag with an ABC worker's ID card inside. Police responded and took Tom to check it out and see if he could identify any of the items. He quickly confirmed it belonged to Jill. A crime scene specialist brought in to help out with the scene analysis found several unsmoked cigarettes and a pencil with the ABC logo laying on the ground not far from where the handbag had been placed. Nearby, this specialist, he pointed to a, a flattened, darkened uh, section of grass and he said it looked like to him what he'd seen many times before, the scene of a, of a sexual assault. Perhaps even more worrying though was, was, the, was the handbag appearing itself because the morning of when the search like immediately began, the police had searched that alleyway and they were full sure, they were dead sure it had not been there, you know, when they had looked previously. So where did it come from? Did the killer come back, you know, leave it back there? Was it was it like the, the BTK killer, you know, do you want to play a game? You know, doing some kind of weird sick shit. It was actually a lot more stupid than that, uh, if you can believe it. It turned out that a local shopkeeper um, on the Saturday morning when they were opening up, up their business had found Jill's handbag lying outside front and had, you know, opened the shop. Found a handbag, took it in, didn't it, tell I anyone. It wasn't until the following Monday morning that this shopkeeper was on the phone to their daughter, who mentioned to them about Jill Mar disappearing in that exact area. And so, well, the shopkeeper got spooked and were like, oh, fuck. And so they just got the handbag out, went back to the alley yeah, where they found it, and were like, Whoop. That's really smart. Just leave that there. Bad idea. Silly. Stupid even. Moronical. Even with the handbag discovery, the investigators, though, were in, still unsure of where Jill was and if she was alive. Suspicions of foul play were further aroused when on Tuesday morning, an employee of the Duchess Boutique, a bridal shop on Sydney Road, not far from the bar where Jill was last seen, handed over to police a CCTV recording from the Saturday night. CCTV captured a man in a blue hoodie and jeans pacing back and forth on Sydney Road. Minutes later, Jill, on her walk home, passed the shop and appeared to talk to the man in the hoodie. Detectives quickly made him the main suspect and target of the investigation and set about trying to identify the mystery man, at the same time debating whether or not to release the images to the public. They knew the likelihood of Jill being alive was slim. They also knew that if she was alive and being held somewhere, releasing the image could push them to harm her in order to cover their tracks. In the end, the decision was made to release the CCTV, along with an appeal to the public for any information that could help them find the man in the blue hoodie, as he quickly became known. I would have gone for the blue bastard, but to each to their own. It would be another video, uh, though in fact, that would provide clues as to Jill's Whereabouts. See, when following the route Jill's phone had taken before the signal died, police found oh a God. worrying crossover. At the same time as cell phone data placed Jill's phone on the Tullamarine Freeway, a CityLink camera logged a car belonging to a man named Adrian Bailey traveling in the same direction. 41 year old Adrian Bailey was already known to the police because. He was a straight-up piece of shit. Bailey's long criminal history began at age 18, when, in 1991, he raped a 16-year-old friend of his sister. The next year, he attempted to assault a 17-year-old girl as she was walking home from a bus stop. 
getting arrested just over a week later when she managed to identify him to the police. Released on bail, he attempted yet another sexual assault, this time on a 16-year-old hitchhiker. He was determined. Now again, his victim managed to identify him and he was re-arrested, and eventually he'd be jailed for five years with a minimum of three to be served. Wow, what a sentence. I'm sure he'll be rehabilitated after that. Oh wait, it gets even better when he would be released early after serving just a whopping 22 months. If that boggles your mind, then click strap yourselves in. Over the span of less than a year from September 2000, Bailey would commit a series of assaults in the St. Kilda area of Victoria. Each woman was driven to a secluded lane and attacked in his car. In April 2001, he was arrested and charged with five counts of rape. After pleading guilty, he was sentenced to 11 years in prison with a minimum non-parole period of eight years. Bailey was eventually released after completing, you know, a, a sex offender program. And then while out on parole, he just randomly bet the shit unprovoked bet the shit out of a guy outside a cafe. So he kind of back in, pal, he would plead guilty to that and be sentenced to a whopping three months. Um, to which, you know, he contested. He kind of would, uh, would, would, would plead against as it being too harsh. No, oh, my Max is getting better. Now investigators had this scumbag piece of shit's phone tracking the same route as missing Jill's. Detectives immediately put Bailey under surveillance and started to do their research on him. But one swift look at his background and they knew they needed to get him into custody as fast as possible. He had to be their man in the blue hoodie. Bailey was arrested by officers on the 27th of September, five days after Jill had last been seen. First to the latest developments in the haunting disappearance of ABC staffer Jill Maher from the Melbourne suburb of Brunswick. Late today, nearly six days after she vanished, following a night out with friends, police arrested a man. When asked if he had anything to do with Jill going missing, Bailey, you know, played the helpful innocent, insisting he had nothing to do with it and he'd spent the night looking for his girlfriend after he ha they had an argument. He said he spent the night looking for his girlfriend after they had an argument and this is his literal, his literal quote. He was looking for his girlfriend because women shouldn't walk on their own, you know. Unknown to Bailey, police were actually carrying out a search of his home during the preliminary stages of the interview and found a SIM card in his washing. It was Jill's SIM card. When confronted with the physical evidence, Bailey's story changed and he finally admitted that he was the guy in the blue hoodie. According to Bailey, um, you know, he just fucking innocently uh, approached Jill um, as she was walking home and just started yapping away to her, you know, casual, friendly conversation by a complete stranger at about like 1.30 a.m. Then he tried to touch her, he tried to give her a little smooch, and she became aggressive with him, if you can believe that, you know, I think he was the victim here. This caused him to see red, and before he knew it, uh, he had strangled her to death. He went down to claim, though, he instantly regretted it, he had never, you know, intentionally went out to hurt anybody, it was a horrible mistake, yada yada, who fucking cares. You can read the rage-inducing transcripts of when he was telling this to the police, take your heart medication before it, because you will be pissed. It has quotes such as, let me just actually get, get my laptop here. Uh, she flipped me off, and that made me angry, because I was actually trying to do a nice thing. You know that? She looked distraught, you know? She looked like she was lost. She didn't. And I don't know, man, you know, always try to do the right thing some, you know, most of the time, and I didn't take well to her response. You know, he, this is literally the transcript, guys. He says, you know, a lot. Don't know if you can see it, probably not, but he says it, trust me. I want to do the right thing, you know. I don't care, I'm, I'm going to jail for a long time. I hope they bring back the death penalty before I get sentenced. Me too, pal. There is no explanation, and there is no excuses for this. All right, for her family this week it must have been hell. You know what I mean? I need to be an actor. Now the detectives they had a they had a hunch. You know maybe it's like a maybe it's like a cop a cop thing a good feeling really that maybe there's a little bit more to his story than he was letting on and that maybe it didn't happen the way he was telling them. But more importantly, they had a confession to work from and most of all they needed to recover Jill's body. After a little persuading, Bailey revealed, though he couldn't tell them exactly where Jill's buddy was, he told them he was sure if they took him to the general area, he'd be able to point it out. So late that night, the detective drove Bailey out to Gisborne, the same Melbourne town where Jill's phone was last known to have travelled. After driving around for hours, and just as the detectives were beginning to lose hope, 
As they turned onto Blackwell Lane, Bailey suddenly raised his head and told the driver to pull over. When asked to show them exactly where they needed to look, Bailey refused and would only point to the place he'd buried Jill Mars' half-naked body in less than 40 You have to be one sick motherfucker to even fuck with the dead body. I mean, not to mention how your body loses all, you know, muscle tightness. You know, your muscles just become weak. Um, you know, it's no surprise the foul order, odors that come out, you know, is your intestines, your stomach, your uh, feces, you name it, just leaking out. Um, and then depending on how they're killed, you know, blood coming out, nose, mouth, ears. It's just... You have to be one kind of sick, deranged mother to follow through and do some shit like that. Hey, what is up, everybody? Sorry for getting on here a little late. I know out there in the East Coast, it's what? Shit, 1037? 837 here in Denver right now. Usually, I like to hop on around 4, 5 o'clock or so, but my God, today has been busier than old busy. Running around, getting this, getting that. I was worse than, um, well, I don't want to uh, sound misogynistic, but I was worse than a woman buying this, buying that, going to stores. I mean, I don't know what my problem was, but anyways, um, I'm jump into uh, that chapter. I noticed there was an episode that it came out that I haven't quite watched yet. Uh, so I was hoping that you guys would just come along for the ride. Um my last two videos, I was shocked because the part two of what I was showcasing uh, had views, but the part one didn't, and the part one establishes what had happened, and it is a gruesome case. Um, for those of you who just stop by every now and then just to kind of get a different take or a reaction from a different uh, YouTuber, uh, feel free to leave a like, a comment, you know, whether it's trolling or saying, yeah, I liked your videos or whatever, you know. Feel free to subscribe. I don't say that often. Still feels weird saying it. But uh, I'm so close to breaking the 400 subscriber mark, which I want to do. And then little by little, continue to, dro to grow this channel. And I promise my subscribers that come March, uh, it's going to be a total revamp of this channel. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, um, one thing I definitely like doing is uh, I enjoy, you know, giving away prizes. Uh, whether it be through like, you know, some trivia, like, um, you know, can you tell me where this particular, you know, lines came from? What movie was it from? Or what actor said it? Or music or whatever. Um, so far, I've given away um, a Nighthawk, a brand new Nighthawk router, uh, a Brio, uh, 4K, 60 frames per second, or was it 120 frames per second? I can't remember quite you know, off the top of my head, but, uh, a webcam, um, let's see, a Nest Hub thermostat, um, so yeah, like I said, I don't know what it is, I just, I feel like, you know, I know some people go out there and buy bots, you know, to flood their channel with what would seem to be fans, but, you know, my thing is, if fans are loyal, I'm gonna go out there and try to by them something nice because they participated in something that I had put together. So uh, without further ado, this guy, of course, needs no introduction. It's Mike from that chapter. Dude is freaking witty. If this is your first time on this channel or first time ever hearing of him, you're going to fall instantly in love with, in love with him. Um, you know, when, uh, when I, uh, when I was in a relationship with my girl, um, you know, she would say, and I would say it too. I'm like, oh, there you are watching your little Irish boyfriend. And then she would come back and say the same stuff. So he's just funny. He has that witty personality that you take him to a bar with you and yeah, you couldn't outdo him. He's just a shit talker. <laughs> and that's what I like about him. Like, you know, he doesn't hold back, but he does it in a tasteful manner because he's not 
being disrespectful towards the individuals that have, you know, suffered at the hands of, you know, some sick fucks. But, um, you know, he is, uh, you know, he's a real deal. And like I keep on saying, I'm shocked that he doesn't have more than 2 million subscribers and that newer YouTube's surpassed him. Newer YouTube channels have surpassed him, which is just mind boggling. So, uh, if you can, please go show him some love. I already know I'm going to love the video, so I'm going to like it right off the bat. And, um, yeah, you know, leave a tip. Uh, I joined his Patreon not too long ago. Um, you know, I just want to see the do succeed. When you see a good, you know, um, creator, you want to see them stick around. And mind you, I haven't been on here long, but I was extremely humbled when I got... You know, Angels and Airwaves, Tom DeLong from Blink-182, his new group, recommending my channel. I got Scary Pool Party people who, people who have been on my channel know who he is. That's Alejandro Aranda, who came runner-up in American Idol 2019, where the judges were just swooning over him. And everybody thought, man, this is a conspiracy theory. How the hell could he have lost? But it couldn't have done better for his career than anything else. I mean, the dude has had a free reign and it's awesome. So anyways, without me talking, a uh, couple things I want to let you know. I do keep the ca uh, closed captions on. Uh, I had one of my subscribers reach out and sh and they are, you know, a little hard of hearing. So the, the captions really do help. Um, so I hope that doesn't bother you guys. I'm sure you can understand. Um, you know, this is a channel where, you know, I don't put anybody down for anything. Uh, only the assholes who deserve it. Um, like these fucking sick wacko killers or people who are fucking trolls, which I can't stand. Yes, I have a little bit of a sailor's mouth on me, but I will never use it in a disrespectful manner towards you or towards a particular race or anything of that nature. So, uh, again, without further ado, let's jump into this. I haven't seen this, but I'm going to call it. He does not seem like the type that did something to hurt her. I may be wrong. I never heard of this case before. But very recently, just pointing out the way that piece of living shit that I hope burns and rots in hell, Chris Watts, like not even a shred of emotion. And, oh my god, his acting, atrocious. 